So now we shall deal with the suprasegmental, suprasegmental features of um, um, pronunciation. Uh, particularly, we would deal with the word stress. Now, try saying this word. What about this one? So I have picked up um, these particular words because from my experience, I don't know why, but there's a tendency to mispronounce them. So learners tend to mispronounce them. So um, uh, did you say correct? Then you were correct. Did you say answer? Okay, then you were correct again. Um, what can you notice? Correct answer. So there's one syllable in these uh, um, words which is more prominent, which is louder. That would mean that this is a stressed syllable. So a stressed syllable is a syllable in a word which sounds louder than the others. Then there's also a variation in the pitch so because each stressed syllable has a change in pitch. What is pitch? This is the level of our voice. The pitch can go up or down. Um, the vowel sound in the stressed syllable is uh, also lengthened. Now, here uh, I have selected the, a series of words consisting of three syllables. Let's see. We have syllabus, substitute, technical. What can we notice? That the first syllable in these words is stressed. Engagement, banana, phonetic. Here in this group, already the second syllable is stressed. Understand, kangaroo, asherat. In this case, already the third syllable is stressed. So that would mean, guys, that actually there is no concrete rule in the English language that will help you uh, place the um, word stress uh, correctly. That is why I keep recommending double checking, looking up the transcription in the dictionary. Definitely, there are some. Um, uh, tendencies uh, which I will share with you, but we have uh, uh, to always um, check in the dictionary whether we are pronouncing the word uh, correctly. Um, now, what happens to the unstressed syllables, right? The vice versa. Um, so, um, in order for a syllable to be perceived as stressed, the syllables around it need to be unstressed, right? And that would mean that uh, those, that syllable or syllables will not be as loud as the stressed syllable. Uh, there will be no variation in the pitch of the voice and definitely they will not be lengthened. Uh, moreover, um, the vowels in those syllables usually are reduced and usually they are reduced to schwa. So when describing this vowel, I kept saying that this is one of the most commonly encountered sound in the English language. And the explanation is very easy because it uh, always occurs in unstressed syllables. If we stress the syllable, then schwa loses its property and a totally different sound is produced. Okay, so some of the rules, right? Um, when um, the letter, for example, A, is reduced to schwa in a stressed syllables, and we have the example arise, syllable, banana. E can also be reduced, the letter E is reduced to uh, schwa, again, in unstressed syllables. Uh, phenomenon, excellent, vowel. I, as in experiment, communicate. O, as in tomorrow, button, 
developing. U as in support, bogus, difficult. Okay, now schwa also uh, renders the combination of letters. Uh, endings, for example, the ending O-U-S as in conscious, fictitious. A-L as in spatial, capital, topical. I-O-N as in session, pronunciation, attention. A-T-E as in accurate, private, delicate. Okay, what about the word substitute? Okay, definitely there is no schwa. Yes, we have one stressed syllable and the others are unstressed. So that means that not all unstressed syllables contain schwa, but definitely those unstressed syllables, the vowels in those unstressed syllables will be reduced. Okay, um, now, rules of word stress. What do you think? Are there any rules? Actually, we don't speak in terms of rules. We rather speak in terms of tendencies. Um, that is why always, always look it up in the dictionary. Um, look at the transcription uh, because there you are bound to notice to see where the stress in the word is. Now, let me share some tendencies with you. Uh, <laughs> there are not many. So, um, when it comes to core vocabulary, right? The most commonly used vocabulary, and usually it consists of uh, Germanic words. Many everyday nouns and adjectives of two-syllable length are stressed on the first syllable. And here we have some examples. Sister, brother, mother, author, paper, table, coffee, lovely. Now, when it comes to the prefixes and suffixes, what do you think? Are they stressed? Mm -mm, no, they are not stressed. So they are usually unstressed. And we have some examples, quietly, originally, defective. But there are some uh, examples as bicycle, dislocate. Okay, so words having a dual row, which are those words. We do know that in English, uh, one word can be uh, both a noun and a verb, or uh, an, uh, a noun and an adjective, or an adjective and a verb. Okay, so what happens to them? So many everyday nouns and adjectives of two-syllable length are stressed on the first syllable, uh, uh, whereas the verb is stressed on the second syllable. And here we have the example, import versus import, rebel, rebel, increase versus increase, address versus address, record versus record. So basically these are all the tendencies um, uh, which might be helpful in determining where to place the stress in a word. Otherwise, again and again, I will emphasize the importance of looking up the transcription in the dictionary.